Hey, what's up? It's just me, Ethan, and, and uh, my wife, Hila. We hit 50,000 subscribers. 300,000 subscribers, dude! We hit 1 million! We have hit 2 million subscribers. Whoa. Our channel is doing much better than it's ever yeah. done. We just honestly can't thank you guys enough for all the love and support yeah. you guys have always shown us. And since we started, it's been a continuous growth. We love our community and we're just so grateful for you guys. The point we're trying to make is that it feels wrong to be taking your guys' money now. Welcome. We're so happy that you're here and that you're giving us a chance of watching our videos. And uh, you know, God bless, man. A383 has utterly lost his mind. No sane person would ever want to have anything to do with you. He's lost the plot. Because you are so bitterly unattractive. You're obsessed with other people's masculinity. Before we talk about how much I dislike Ethan now, I just want to say he used to be one of my favorite YouTube channels back in the day. H3H3 has gone out of touch. I'm a YouTuber with a flawless reputation. Jeez, dude. Where, how far are you removed from the YouTube community? You might say, everybody loves me. Are you just gonna be one of those, well, I've made it now, so forget everybody else, people? You see, some people tell me I've changed, and frankly, I don't know what they're talking about. Why do we have a natural inclination to hate the accumulation of wealth? Why has millionaire or billionaire or any other label relating to an individual's level of wealth become a negative connotation? Why, when a sponsorship comes up in a YouTube video, do we get that compelling feeling to click onto any other garbage that YouTube has spat into the recommended column on the right hand side? Is it the fact that seeing someone with more wealth makes us feel like we've come up short in some way? Is it the fact that rich people are an easy target and putting them down seems to be somewhat of a dismissal for where we need to improve personally? Or is it simply the fact that deep down we know there's no shortcut to having wealth, therefore making it one of the only real indicators of an individual's ability to perform better than anyone else? Government policy, public protests, and more recently YouTube videos, all of which following a similar toxic narrative. The hatred of those with the ability to accumulate wealth. Certainly an underlying motive for the content creator we'll look at today. H3H3 Productions, also known as Ethan and Ila, two longtime content creators who despite once having a reputation as the greatest YouTube roasters of all time have since descended their status, often labelled by former fans as being on the same level as the people they used to roast. What could have caused such a shift in their reputation? Was it their change in demeanour from a chilled out couple to an angry, somewhat bitter pair of creators? You are a vile slime of a human that will nobody will ever want you because you're so pathetic. Maybe you should calm down. Was it the neglect of the channel that made them so famous in the first place? We've pretty much disappeared the past three or four months. Were they changed by the insane level of income that they were bringing in? Was it a political problem? Thinking <laughs> of Joe versus, by, versus Trump kind of like is gonna give me anxiety. There are so many different elements worth analyzing in this one, so I'd say it'll be an interesting story. Join me as we cover the downfall of almost everyone's at one point favorite YouTube couple, H3H3 Productions. Our story begins in somewhat of an unconventional location compared to our other downfall videos. We normally begin in a town or a city or simply an apartment, but for this one we actually begin in 2007 at a Jewish Holocaust Museum located in Jerusalem, Israel. A place where an unknown Ethan Klein and Hila Hackman would meet for the first time. And then I remember at the, at the museum was the first time we like caught eyes. Caught eyes. More like and, what up? Ethan, having come to Jerusalem from the United States, went home by himself shortly after meeting Hila. However, they continued to talk on Skype up until 2009. At which point, Hila would come back and stay with Ethan in the U.S. Also stating that they were like a team from the second she came to stay with Ethan. And I think we were teamed up from that first minute. We were, <laughs> we were like teamed up. Boy. However, after living together for one year in the USA, Ela's visa expired and she had to move back to Israel. Her visa expired, we moved together to Israel. Ethan, wanting to continue the relationship, decided to move with her to Israel and got a desk job in marketing and content management. What was your desk job? What kind of job? I was just a content manager. However, after five years of slogging through the job, Ethan felt unsatisfied and wanted to pursue his true passion of comedy. So, five years working a job that I eventually wasn't satisfied. I want to do comedy, so let me do something about it. Now this happened to line up with Ela studying video art, who at the time was given an assignment to make a video about addiction. And she needed someone to be in the video, so Ethan volunteered. And we have to make a video 
for my art class about addiction. I'm like, okay, let's do it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Ethan and Neil have then created their first ever video for Ela's video art class in May 2011, titled Chocolate, attempting to abstractly display the concept of addiction. This first video was accompanied by the creation of the H3H3 Productions YouTube channel on the 30th of April 2011, which was created on the very first day of Ela's video art class. We made the channel together the first day Ela had a video art class. The name H3H3 is often translated as he he with threes instead of e's. However, this isn't entirely accurate. The name actually came from the initials of both Ethan and Ela. Because Ela's name is Ela Hackman, and my middle name is Edward, so it was Ethan Edward. So it was just E E H H, and we said hey he he. <laughs> And that was that. As of May 2011, there are officially content creators for YouTube. Two oddballs in Israel with nothing standing in the way of becoming whoever they wanted to be. However, there was just one minor issue. An issue that almost 100% of content creators face when they first begin. Their videos sucked. I mean, our early videos are f so off the wall, dude. Like, compl like unwatchable, so I'm not surprised at all that nobody watched them. <laughs> Lack of video context, no real subject in most videos, incorrect settings. What is that? Why is it in 4x3, Ela? So, because I had no idea what export means. All factors ultimately leading to no one watching their content. On top of this, their videos had no real target audience or niche, so viewers had no idea what to expect when watching an H3H3 video. However, here's what H3H3 did right. They had no expectation for views or getting famous or anything along those lines, really. There was nothing at stake. There was no... Uh, delusions of grandeur, there was no expectation at all. Which is excellent, as when there's no expectation, it's not like you're gonna give up straight away, considering you never expected to get anywhere anyway. By May 2013, two years after beginning to create content, H3H3 had achieved a grand total of 275 subscribers, a number that would have made many creators give up, but not Ethan and Ela. Their lack of expectation as well as their passion for making the videos ensured that their fuel tank was always sitting at full. And perhaps this unconditional love for creating videos would finally start to pay off after two years. As in May 2013, H3H3 would begin their first series that would go on to provide them with their first piece of proper success on the YouTube platform. On the 12th of May 2013, H3H3 Productions would upload a video titled Warm It Up EXE, That's a 10. That's a 10. This video was somewhat similar to many of the other rising meme videos at the time, basically making a joke out of a serious video with ridiculous edits and bizarre sound design. This video, shown in a screenshot from December 2013, got a whopping 238,000 views in the first six months of being uploaded, taking H3H3's total subscriber count from 275 to over 1,000 in October 2013, approximately 2.5 years after initially creating the channel. It took us like two years to get, I think, 1,000 mm -hmm. subscribers. In case you didn't notice, we broke 1,000 subscribers. Wow, that's a lot of people, huh? Then pretty much like any other content creator in the beginning, H3H3 Productions just kind of continued to do what worked previously. So the H3H3 Productions channel began to upload a bunch of different EXE videos, kind of following a similar style to the one that blew up initially. This ultimately resulted in subscriber growth for the channel. However, by May 2014, Ethan and Ela would have never expected the level to which their channel was about to explode in popularity, all beginning with a single video titled How to Kiss H3H3 Reaction Video. Guys, we got a special video on board here today. It's a tutorial about how to make out the H3H3 reaction series. The series or video type that would absolutely explode them into stardom. Now while these days it seems like every YouTuber and their dog has done a reaction series at some point, back in early 2014, reaction videos were a completely unknown genre. In the beginning where we were making reaction videos, we were, I don't know if we were the only ones doing it, but it seemed like at the time. Yeah. And it was like open rains, it was open fields. Recently, it seems as though reaction videos are mainly used as a filler for when content creators have nothing to talk about, but the original concept for H3H3's reaction videos was actually birthed out of Ethan's genuine outrage for how bad the videos were. And everyone was circle jerking about how great this video was, and, it, and I was like angry. I was like, this video is so stupid. This first kissing video reaction performed so well that it led to another reaction. Here and here today with another reaction video. Then another reaction. Here's, here's the culprit. He's got a bandana, so he's a little bit metal, you know, he's a little bit edge. Eventually taking over as the main type of content on the channel. The audience loved the reaction videos for Ethan's over-the-top, relentless barrage of genuine anger towards the stupidity in each video that he was reviewing. Well, you know the show's gonna be good when you got a guy, when the man behind the... Curtain's name is Dick Wolf. 
And who could forget his accomplice, co-producer, Speed Weed. Can we get some Emmys for Dick Wolf and Speed Weed? Ah. <coughs> and the pool of different videos to react to was so ripe at the time. SoFlo Antonio, Prank Invasion, Oc TV. A time in YouTube's history when you didn't really have to be a truthful individual to get views. However, as fake pranksters and disingenuous gurus rose in popularity, so did H3H3, being ready to call them out on their lack of authenticity whenever a video was posted. The H3H3 reaction videos caused Ethan and Ela to go from 5,000 subscribers in May 2014 to 50,000 only five months later in October 2014. However, this would only be the beginning. By October 2015, one year later, the couple was at 300,000 subscribers. Then 1 million only five months after that. You may have heard that we hit 1 million! H3H3 Productions had gone from 5,000 subscribers to 1 million in a space of only 22 short months. The third year, I think by the end of the third year, we probably had a million subscribers. So, wait, oh my so between God. year two no. and year three? Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? However, it wasn't all smooth sailing for Ethan and Ela. In around October 2016, just after hitting 2.5 million subscribers, very early signs began to show up here and there, hinting at an impending downfall for H3H3. A lot of people have been complaining recently that our videos suck and that they hate us. After two and a half years of making H3H3 reaction videos, one thing was for certain. There wasn't nearly as much content to dunk on by late 2016. More people started doing it and the pool of stuff just starts running dry. There's not that much stuff that you can lampoon. The pool was running dry. And I think this explanation is completely justified if I'm honest. If you guys remember YouTube back in 2014 and 15, there was so much content that you could roast. But by late 2016, early 2017, the cringe had almost completely disappeared and genuine effortful content began to take center stage on the platform. Now this was great for the YouTube platform, but as for the quality of H3H3's videos, this was a negative, because simply put, there was just less content to roast. Ethan and Neela had explained that on some occasions they would work all month to make three reaction videos, only to scrap them as they didn't think that they were good enough. We made three reaction videos, almost to completion, and we scraped all of them. Finally, the H3H3 channel had grown to such a size where they had potential to do serious damage to any content creator that was called out. Since I started, our channel started to get bigger, it's like the person you choose to talk about is gonna They're have gonna a get hard Exactly. Yeah. Regardless, whatever we said, this was the bottom line. By late 2016, the circumstances for the video style that had made them so famous in the first place were beginning to change. Not exactly the greatest scenario for any content creator. However, things weren't all that bad. I stated to be the early sign of the downfall, but H3H3's long backlog of videos was still causing fairly tremendous subscriber growth for the channel. And as they say, sometimes when one door closes, another one opens. Because only two months after making this video explaining why the reaction videos were slowing down, Ethan and Ela would launch a new project for their YouTube channel. A project that would increase their notoriety dramatically. A project providing the audience with the ability to learn extensively from individuals who previously had not shared their stories. And of course, a project project that would go on to create levels of controversy that Ethan and Ela would have never been able to expect. We're of course talking about the H3 podcast. In the beginning, the podcast was awesome. The only other real big podcaster at the time was Joe Rogan, who would never interview YouTubers like Boogie2988 or Joey Salads. So the H3 podcast was there to fill that gap. We finally had that opportunity to get an insight into the mindset of some of YouTube's greats in long form format. The podcast, as well as H3's extensive backlog of legendary reaction videos, caused the channel to grow by around 300,000 subscribers per month in late 2016. But while their notoriety was skyrocketing, it would ironically be the same time that their reputation began to decline rapidly. As the popularity of the podcast increased, one thing was noticed by the fans of H3H3 Productions. The content on the main channel was beginning to be neglected. H3H3 Productions went from one video per week to around one or two per month with the H3 podcast taking its place by pumping out regular episodes. Now, in a low resolution context, this wasn't such a bad thing. H3 was still uploading videos just on a different channel. However, the reality of how the audience felt at the time was something more like, we can see that you're neglecting well thought out selfless content on the main channel for high earning, low entertainment content on the podcast channel. 
This kind of mind frame caused fans to begin losing respect for Ethan and Eli. Oh God, it's like, I've seen this comment like a thousand times since we started doing the podcast regularly is that yeah. I've lost all respect for you. Ethan claimed to think that people were losing respect for him due to making minor research errors in the podcast. Some of your research wasn't, wasn't, um, performed at the best it could. I've lost all respect for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm triggered, so what? However, I think the underlying reality was that people began to lose respect for the fact that he had chosen the podcast, a low-effort, high-income video type over his former high-effort, low-income, reactionary video type. From that point onwards, it was obvious that his audience slowly turning against him began to have somewhat of an impact on Ethan. Ethan began to seem more angry, sensitive, and serious. Somewhat of a depressing fact considering that Ethan had always been known as the most carefree dude on the platform. This element was then somewhat cemented when H3H3 Productions would upload a video in January 2018 titled Where Have We Been? This video addressed Ethan and Ela's lack of content on the main channel. It's pretty obvious that we've ghosted out on YouTube. We've pretty much disappeared the past three or four months, we post like occasionally. But most importantly, the decline of Ethan's emotional state as observed by the fans. Towards the end of last year, started to realize like I had become a worse person. All of a sudden I was like grouchier, more arrogant, more cynical. Ethan and Ela then signed off the video by stating that they wanted to get back to the place they were previously by uploading more regularly on H3H3 Productions. I want to come back to our community that I love and, and have fun. I just want to have fun again. And they honored this statement by spending six months uploading somewhat regularly to the channel. But included in these somewhat regular uploads was a video that would be somewhat of an indicator about the change in their YouTube mind frame. So this person wrote H3H3 is transphobic eight times in response to my tweet and it has 300 retweets and a thousand likes. In April 2018, four months after apologizing for not uploading, H3H3 Productions then uploaded a video titled I'm sorry if you were offended. In this video, Ethan addressed a Twitter situation involving many people calling him transphobic for making a minor joke about being Ellen. Underneath, I said, my name is Ellen. I'm changing my name from Ethan to Ellen. Now, while respectably, Ethan didn't apologize for what he said. My intention wasn't to be offensive, so can you just accept it on that face value? If you're looking for an apology, you're not gonna get it. It was still somewhat obvious in his body language that people calling him out was having somewhat of an effect on him. Now, this was just kind of depressing for the former fans of his. Ethan had literally gained notoriety for being being able to make a joke out of these kinds of people. That's deplorable and should not be allowed anywhere. Like, they should be banned. Should be banned. Should be banned. Should be banned. He literally grew his audience through demolishing people like idiotic social justice warriors and the easily offended transgender community. The Ethan Klein from two years previously would have likely made a video memeing the offended tweeters, while the present Ethan was sitting in front of a camera defending himself for what he said on Twitter. This was all alongside another Twitter incident where Ethan was once again justifying himself for tweeting out something to do with someone getting cancelled, both being changes that clearly represented the adjustment in Ethan's way of thinking. And it wasn't only the fans noticing this adjustment in thinking, so did other YouTubers, with Diesel Patches uploading a video three months after Ethan's apology video, basically saying, saying what everyone was thinking at the time. 2015 was probably his golden age. But now Ethan is a shadow of his former self. This was accompanied by another video at a later date by YouTuber Christopher Tom, who highlighted somewhat of a point to do with Ethan's priority of money over video quality. After three months of not posting to the main channel, they came back with an ad for a freemium game that had microtransactions. After three months of not uploading, H3H3 released a two minute video which was nothing besides an advertisement for their new mobile app. Now, while the audience didn't mind the fact that they made a mobile game, the classic H3 audience had waited three months for a new upload only to have an advertisement thrown in their face. Somewhat of an abstract display that Ethan and Ela saw no reason for the H3H3 channel besides for advertising. These various actions caused the subscriber count on H3H3 Productions to stagnate by December 2019. An interesting discovery considering they were still getting 10 million views per month without gaining any subscribers. Which leads us into the madness of 2020. Somewhat of an extraordinarily controversial year for Ethan and Ela. In April 2020, H3H3 was caught out by some ordinary gamers. Basically for the fact that Ethan apparently said it was selfish for Jeff Bezos to only donate a hundred million dollars to the pandemic, despite the fact that Ethan was extremely rich himself and had not donated anything. This is an individual that shits on other people's for how little they donate while also doing the exact same themselves. Ethan later debunked the claim showing that Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers was incorrect. And I said, yo, this these happened 15 days before Jeff Bezos ever donated, so obviously 
it would be temporarily impossible for me to have donation shamed him. However, possibly one of the biggest mistakes Ethan made in this video was displaying his level of wealth to the YouTube audience. You may have noticed our beautiful LA mansion. And no, it's not a set. <laughs> It's really where we live. Now, while the intro was clearly somewhat of a meme, it was still an honest representation of how much money he had. And while the money itself was somewhat enviable, the bigger question was, why does every H3H3 reaction video now have to have sponsors and ads in it if they have so much money? Now, this is somewhat of a stupid assumption, honestly. Everyone knows that deep down, no matter how much money you have, you'll always want more. But it was like, why not just leave the podcast, which was clearly making insane amounts of money, as the main cash cow while leaving H3H3 Productions as an unsponsored channel for the sake of the art. Regardless, publicly displaying their level of wealth seemed to be somewhat of a long-term negative for the goodwill of Ethan and Ela. Then, following this whole fiasco, the notorious beef between H3H3 and Keemstar would begin. Initially on Twitter, then transitioning over to YouTube after H3H3 Productions would upload the video titled Content Nuke Keemstar, basically highlighting all the awful things done by Keemstar throughout his career. Somewhat of a sequel to iDub's Keemstar Content Cop posted four years previously. Keemstar then returned the video doing a similar thing and the rest played out like pretty much any other YouTube beef. The most interesting part about this whole thing now that it's over is the subscriber count of each individual. As soon as the video was released by H3H3, Keemstar lost 110,000 subscribers, but since has called back to having more subscribers than he had before it was released. Which is barely any surprise really, he's literally the unnukable YouTube cockroach. Meanwhile, if we look at H3H3's graph, almost the opposite happened. H3H3 gained 30,000 subscribers off the bat, but has since lost 100,000 since posting the video, possibly signalling at the current state of the H3 reputation. So, like all of these downfall videos, we'll end by asking the golden question. What caused the downfall of H3H3 Productions? Well, I think we could probably all agree. The real reason that H3H3's reputation has had such a tremendous downfall has basically been Ethan's transition from a carefree, no apologies type guy whose sole goal was to expose and roast the idiots that we all hate like SJWs and fake pranksters, to a guy who clearly has a deep concern for his own reputation, now somewhat controlled by the very individuals he used to roast by having to apologize for any minor incorrect behavior. At the end of the day, who cares about the money? Who cares how rich he is? Who cares how many sponsorships he puts in his videos? If you dislike him for that, I think that's kind of pathetic and shallow. But what I do think is justified is not liking him for how much he cares about his own reputation. What happened to the Ethan that literally could not care less about what anybody had to say about him? What happened to the Ethan that would just laugh it off when anyone called him a transphobe? What happened to the Ethan who was just on YouTube to have a good time? The whole aspect of H3H3's financial status is not a negative thing in itself, but having to show it on his channel somewhat highlights the insecure person that he's transitioned into. And that's what people have come to hate. The insecurity, not the financial stability. But at the same time, it's so hard to sit here and say that it's all negative. How much good information and life advice from creators has been provided through the H3 podcast? How much free entertainment has been uploaded by Ethan and Ela over their nine years on YouTube? I would genuinely credit H3H3 with transforming YouTube into much more of a genuine place. If you did fake pranks back in the day or were untruthful in any way, there was always that chance of being called out by H3H3 Productions. Maybe H3H3 and Keemstar are more like each other than they realize, both being somewhat of an abstract mediator for scumbag behavior on the platform. And I'd argue that over the long run, Ethan and Ela have provided infinitely more positive than they have negative. But as highlighted in this video, there's certainly still room for improvement.